Hello everyone, welcome to Organolysis. So this is our rearrangement reaction part 5 and in this video we are going to learn about important rearrangement reaction that is Hoffman, Cartier, Slosen and Smith rearrangement reaction. Okay, So these all four are the are interrelated to each other and they are generally they are formed the same intermediate. Okay, So that's why I am taking this all four rearrangement reaction in a one video. Now let's see the first rearrangement reaction that is Hoffman rearrangement reaction. Let's see the first compound which is used for this uh, which which is used for this rearrangement reaction and that is this amide. Okay, so the main purpose of this rearrangement reaction is to form amide to a primary amine. So this is your an amide. This is your amide and this is your primary amine. Okay. This is your primary amine. Now, the reagent which is used that is uh, Br2NaOH or you can use NaOBr. Okay, so you can you can give this uh, both of them. Okay, either this Br2NaOH or the NaOBr. Okay, this Br2NaOH generally forms this NaOBr in the reaction medium, reaction medium, and then the overall reaction follows. Uh, the, follows the or for, follows the rearrangement path. Now let's see the mechanism uh, in the step one. We are, now we have this NH2. We can write this NH2 in this way. Now we have in the base in the medium. Now this base can abstract proton from here, and this bonds goes to the negative nitrogen side. And here we have the nitrogen uh, negative charge over the nitrogen center, and uh, then uh, this uh, this negative charge directly attack to this bromine that is Br2. We can write this Br2 in this way and this Br will leave from the system. Okay, so that is how we can get uh, this product. This is one kind of intermediate. This intermediate is basically called n haloamide. That is n haloamide. This is called n haloamide. Okay, like this. Now, uh, see the next step for this that is if we use any obia that is your any kind of hypo hypohalite or hypobromide okay so this NOBR is called hypobromide okay not bromide it's bromide okay so any kind of hypohalite you can use that is hypohalite okay so this can also be used for this reaction now see the next step for this reaction is that if you use NaOH and Br2 it will generally form this NaOBr so sodium hypobromide in the reaction medium and which, which is NaBr and H2 now we can write this NaOBr in this way that is Na plus or OBr minus like this now this this is another step another pathway to form this N haloamide N uh, haloamide like this that is OBr minus takes a proton from here here we have the negative charge and this negative charge attacks to this BROH. Now how this BROH will generate? This BROH will generate uh, in after this proton, after this abstraction of this proton that is BROH will leave. Okay, now this BROH and this negative charge attacks to this BR and OH will leave from the system and then you get this n haloamide. This is your n haloamide, right? Like this. Okay, now let's see the step 2 uh, then there after this uh, this is the important step and in this step the rearrangement has been takes place now this OH minus abstract, abstract a proton from this uh, nitrogen center you have this negative charge over the nitrogen side now this now the important step for this is the rearrangement step that is these bonds go here and this R group will migrate to the nitrogen center and now this will leave from the system can just because of it is a living group so that is why this Br will leave from the system and you get this kind of intermediate. Now this intermediate is called isocyanate intermediate. Isocyanate intermediate. Now why this intermediate is so important? This <laughs> intermediate is so much important for all those four rearrangement reactions that is Hoffman, Cartier, Slosen and Smith they all generally follow this isocyanate intermediate okay so let's see this is your intermediate now after this the water will attack over here and this bonds go over here 
sorry these bonds go over here and this is your o minus here you have the after this minus of h plus you are getting this oh over here now these bonds go here and these bonds go to the nitrogen side and you are after this protonation after this protonation you are getting this NH and C double O minus and this OH and further this OH will attach to the center go over here and this will break to the nitrogen side and that is how you can get this is your primary amine so our prime target is to form the primary amine this is our primary amine ok that's it for this uh, Huffman rearrangement reaction. Now let's see uh, some important proof for this reaction. Now why this? Uh, uh, now you see the rearrangement. Now you can, how can you uh, predict that this uh, rearrangement step is intramolecular or intermolecular? You can predict this uh, is a, as a intramolecular, and why this is so? Now let's see the example and proof for, proof for this rearrangement reaction is that is if, if here i am taking this compound that is conh2 here is your deuterium substituted in the meta position and uh, its hydrogen is substituted in by using deuterium and this is your conh2 there is no substitution but here i am taking this nitrogen as a isotope labeling that is nitrogen i am making, making this nitrogen is nitrogen 15. now if we if we use this nocl h2 we are getting this two product only okay not this two product now this product is basically the uh, basically the rearrangement of this here after this uh, amide is rearranged to this amine and here is a deuterium and here after this CONH2 after this rearrangement it will get this NH2 over here okay so this implies that this will not leave from the system okay so it will form in the uh, same uh, in same molecule so that is why this rearrangement is intramolecular not intermolecular so it is intramolecular not inter now see this is your normal product this is our normal product and here is your crossover product but this product cannot obtain you can't get this product because uh, see that this deuterium is this deuterium is migrate to this one that is uh, where the nitrogen is uh, labeled by using 15 and here you, you can see that this deuterium is placed over this 15 in H2 it is just because of the crossover product if this crossover experiments have if the crossover reaction happen then this kind of crossover product this is your crossover product if this crossover reaction happens, then this crossover product you can you will get obtained. But you won't get this kind of crossover product. You are we are getting this normal product. So this implies this is a intramolecular reaction. Now this one of the important and this is another another important proof of this reaction is that uh, this reaction is intramolecular and there is a formation of the retention of configuration. The important step is the retention of configuration and why this uh, why I am saying this it is uh, retention of configuration is that if this if it, if it is break from this reaction then there is a two possibility of formation uh, the, if there then there is a possibility of this kind of intermediate that is pH or H so here is a, here is a positive charge now if we use any nucleophile like OH minus either it can attack from here or it can attack from here so there is a formation of two racemic mixture product racemic mixture product like either r or either s but you can see that if we if if we here i'm taking this compound as a s isomer so this is your chiral center and this is your s isomer after this rearrangement this s isomer will retain its configuration and after this amide to amine I mean formation you are getting this A size one not any kind of other size one so that is why this reaction is intramolecular and the form retention of configuration is being takes place now C uh, comes to our uh, examples which are important uh, this is that we here I am taking a compound like this this compound if we are taking we are using this NaOCl and H plus now the mechanism is slightly different but you can easily predict the mechanism okay so after this after the first step this is your first step this OCl minus will abstract a proton from here this bonds go over here and here you have the negative charge now this this is not Cl this is your 
not be a this is a CL okay so this negative charge attack over this CL and you are getting this CL okay so this NCL bond and after this OH minus will free so this OH minus will attack over here and you are getting this CWH and NBR and the after this the all mechanism are similar so that you can easily predict that up from here they will form the isocyanide intermediate and after that you are getting this product that is CWH to this CO NH2 CO NBR that is a N haloamide part will rearrange to isocyanide intermediate and after that after the hydrolysis part and you are getting this kind of acid okay and primary amine and this is called important that is your anthranilic acid so it is called anthranilic acid so this is your anthranilic acid now let's come to the next example of this reaction is this one here is your CWH and here is your amide if we use BRT NOH we all know that what will be the product the amide will be arranged to this primary amine and the importance of the importance of this reaction is if we hit this uh, if we hit this compound then we are getting this kind of uh, structure that is this negative lone pair of electron attack to this C double bond O and this OH will leave after this after hitting this water will leave from the system and you are getting this kind of lactam okay so this is our final product now let's come to the uh, next rearrangement reaction that is your Cartier's rearrangement reaction okay so what is the Cartier's rearrangement the basically the substrate which is used uh, for this Cartier's rearrangement is this CON3 okay in this Cartier's rearrangement the substrate is like this and this is called uh, azide that is N3 and N3 is called azide then this is an acid azide and if we heat this reaction in benzene or chloroform any kind of solvent the you can easily identify the reaction is either uh, Cartier's or Lawson or Smith. You can easily predict this reaction is uh, Cartier's rearrangement because of this N3 is over here. And another thing is the uh, benzene or chloroform the solvent. Okay, you can easily predict. Now the outcome is the same of these reactions also. That is, if we use this kind of azide uh, after heating, the, we are, you are getting this kind of primary amine. Okay, the mechanism. Let's see the mechanism. Mechanism is nothing but we can write this N3 in this way. That is N minus or N2 plus. Now th this is your leaving group. Uh, if it is rearranged, then this N2 will leave from the system. So that and this after this rearrangement, it will leave from the system. And finally, the intermediate. I already said that this intermediate is basically the same for all this rearrangement. So this is your isocyanate. See, this is your isocyanate, and after this uh, hydrolysis part, you are getting this RNH2. That is this nothing but like this, and the final step you can uh, easily predict the product. Now, if we use this ROH, uh, then you are getting this kind of product. And the, like, if it is ROH oxygen lone pair, it will attack over this C double bond O, and after this this here is a, a, a bond breaking to this nitrogen side and it this negative charge takes a proton from here and you are getting this kind of product and this product is basically called urethane so i am written the name over here that is your urethane okay now there is a one kind of substrate which is used for this cartier rearrangement that you should know for this reaction is this this kind of substrate that is your hydrogen kind of substrate okay so this uh, a nitrogen lone pair if we use this uh, you have to prepare the living group for this arrangement so how how could you prepare this uh, living group so see if we use this HNO2 so it generates in situ in this NO plus we all know that this HNO2 in situ generates this NO plus and what is how can you get this HONO and double bond O after this protonation it will leave from the system you are getting this NO plus. Now this nitrogen lone pair takes uh, attached to this in N double bond O and you are getting this kind of intermediate here is a positive charge after this uh, leaving group leaving of this protonation after this leaving of this uh, hydrogen H or H plus you are getting this intermediate and it, it this intermediate readily totomerizes to this structure that is this one now this oxygen has a lone pair it will take a proton 
it, it takes a proton just because it is an acidic medium so that it takes a proton from here and this is your OH2 plus and now here is your this OH2 can live in this way okay in this way and here you have the negative charge over here now this uh, your living group or this N3 or azide substrate is ready and now it can easily rearrange to this uh, rearrange goes through this cardiac rearrangement okay uh, like this sorry like this okay so i have not written the overall product uh, now let's see the next i will show you all the examples for this of this reaction in the last now let's come to the lozen rearrangement the lozen rearrangement is the same or similar kind of rearrangement see here is the h plus it generally takes a proton from here and now after this uh, taking up this proton this oh2 plus after this uh, proton take after this proton addition and it will leave from the system and there is a formation of this uh, rearrangement and you are getting this same isocyanate intermediate i will told you that all the rearrangement forms this isocyanate intermediate so that you can get this primary amine so they are all are interrelated to each other and this is one kind of that is your basic uh, in this is your acidic medium acidic medium lucid and this is your basic medium lucid rearrangement okay and the outcome is the same in both of both of these cases now let's come the next that is your smear rearrangement and here is uh, basically the reagent which is used that is your hydrazoic acid okay so this is uh, uh, that, that, that you can easily predict that this hydrazoic acid is if we, if the hydrazoic acid is present then the reaction goes through this meat rearrangement reaction okay now this acid azide uh, this acid can you can if you can easily prepare from acid to this azide a derivative uh, like after this h plus the intermediate is same the isocyanate and your outcome is also same that is your primary amine now see the mechanism there is a two kinds of mechanism that is one is for uh, acid and one is for ketone so this is first is your for acid that is a carboxylic acid now this for this acid it takes a proton from here this is your OH plus and this nitrogen attack over here in like this and after that these bonds go here and this OH will leave from the system and finally the intermediate that you are getting for the from this reaction is like this and these bonds go here and this R will, R will migrate to this nitrogen and N2 will leave from the system and the finally intermediate that is the isocyanate and the in case of ketone so this is your ketone okay so this similar process oxygen takes a proton from here this is your OH plus and this uh, in in this is your HN3 you can write this N minus or N2 plus this attack to this carbonyl carbon and after this rearrangement you are getting now uh, this uh, bonds go here this OH will leave and R will migrate to this nitrogen side and this N2 will leave from the system so this is now is now a living group so that where is a positive charge this oxygen attack to this center and after this totomerization you are getting this kind of product okay so this is your as a overall smith reaction now let's come to the examples which is important to see that and how can you prepare uh, that how can you uh, uh, produce or uh, acid to, to yeah, now you can how can you identify the reaction that here you have given this is social to nan3 here you have to prepare one product and after this heating is given so from this two reagent you can easily uh, think about this uh, Cartier's rearrangement so that uh, that is here this is so Cl2 means this CWH will convert it to COCl and after then it will convert it to COCl and after this addition of NaN3 that means you are getting this CON3 so your substrate is ready to undergo the Cartier's rearrangement okay now this part is basically fixed because it is your chiral center so this uh, this chiral center will not change after this rearrangement so that you are getting after heating on H minus that is the final product is NH2 like this okay so this is your final product this part is basically same so this has a retention of configuration over here now uh, this is one of the important example that is your uh, cyclohexanone and HN3 or H2SO4 so, okay so that uh, if you use this H2SO4 or HN3 so it follows this mid reaction and after this ring migration you are getting this kind of product so 
this this kind of product you you can also prepared by using Beckman reagent. Okay, so this is your epsilon caprolactam. Okay. Now let's see the last example of this reaction. The, this is your Lawson rearrangement. Okay, so how to prepare this OH as a leaving group using SOCl2? Using SOCl2, you can prepare this OH to Cl. Now it can after heating, you can get this isocyanate intermediate. And the relation between this all these three reaction that is a relation. Now what kind of relation they are follows? Uh, let's see uh, that here I'm taking this compound this uh, kind of chiral part is basically same in all those three compound I am written over here but this part is the CO and the rest part CO or R prime you can say the CO R prime part is basically different for all those three cases uh, now let's see this you are taking this in three over here here is the CWH and here is your NACOCOCH3 so you can easily predict which of the substrate will undergo which kind of rearrangement reaction now here is a here you have given this benzene so you can easily predict predict that it will follow the Cartier's rearrangement so I already said that the Cartier's or in case of Cartier's the benzene or chloroform basically used and this kind of substrate also used so this is your Cartier's rearrangement next is the HN3 is used if the HN3 is used that means it is this follows this mid reaction it follows the Smith reaction and after that uh, you have given this uh, kind of substrate and then this OH- or H2O and you have this NHOAC this is your leaving part so this kind of substrate is basically undergo the Lozen rearrangement so these three kind of sub this three kind of uh, uh, substrate generally follows generally uh, form only one product uh, that is this one okay the they all are follow uh, they also all are follow the same procedure or the same intermediate so that's why this follow uh, it, it that's why they all the three compounds from this same uh, on the same compound that forms this one and this part is if I don't know what is the I, I'm not going to this chiral center this guy if this chiral center if this chiral center is R then this chiral center is also R so that is the retention of configuration has been expressed Oh, uh, so that's it for this uh, video and I hope this video is very much helpful and this video is very basically for this the student those students who are who are in undergraduate and this uh, who are preparing for IIT jam and this is this video is for you and this is very much important for your exams okay so I hope this video is very much helpful and very much uh, knowledgeable uh, so that we can easily is uh, you can easily uh, predict all those any kind of product uh, regarding to this four rearrangement reaction okay so that's it for this video and thank you so much for watching